Well, it's been days, 10 days exactly, since the Tour de France wrapped up in Paris. Jonas Vingegaard wearing the yellow jersey for two stages and taking the overall title for his first Tour win. And maybe that name means something to you if you follow cycling circles. It likely does. But for the Boise bike racing aficionados, the name Matteo Jorgensen means more. Matteo has been back in Boise for about a week, having just finished his first Tour de France, where he finished a surprising 21st out of the 176 riders that started the race. He even sprinkled in a few top five stage finishes to get there. Well, this week, the Boise high grad has been resting, for sure, hanging with his friends and his family, but he's also been training while he's been home, getting in 20 hours on his bike because, well, there's still the rest of the professional cycling season to go. Mateo took some time from his training this week to sit down with us and reflect on his first foray into cycling's biggest race. Hey, Mateo, what are you doing? If training for the Tour de France was young Mateo Jorgensen's answer to his mom's question, well, it wouldn't have shocked her. He was interested in doing anything his big brother and sister were doing, but loved the out of doors. Um, any athletic pursuit he was interested in, at least trying and ultimately succeeding. Turning three national junior titles before he turned 19 into a professional career in Europe, Matteo took his first turn on the tour on the day he turned 23. But it might be Matteo Jorgensen who's played it perfectly, and here he comes just behind with Nick Schultz. Let's see if they don't work together. Matteo made quite the impression and several mentions. Not easy to find the breakaway. Matteo's riding great. During the three-week, 21-stage race across Europe. I've been sleeping a lot this week, so I haven't had so much time to think. I've just been... Back home in Boise, uh, Matteo told us no, the pre-race nerves he thought he'd put behind him returned. Yeah, I have to say, I'll admit the first week before we started the tour, when, I, when it was all kind of the lead up, and yeah, I was, I was nervous. I mean... It was a big moment, and the tour is the biggest bike race in the world, so yeah, Lewis definitely I was nervous. But once he settled in, Matteo seemed to find his rhythm. He might have just enough to win the stage, but it looks to me that Jorgensen is the strongest of these four riders. But of course, the course had its share of ups and downs. Oh, wait a moment. We've got something going on here. Oh, no. Matteo Jorgensen. Uh, unfortunately, quick changing tires weren't the only bumps in the road for Matteo. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at some of your battle scars. Yeah. That comes with the territory. Yeah, it's part of the sport. I mean, it's a dangerous sport where on super narrow tires and, and um, crashes happen. Was that stage three? Uh, I think you're right, stage three. Uh, it was just before we flew to France. Just as we mentioned oh that, goodness. a big pileup. They were so closely tight. And there was just a big pileup on a little cobblestone section. And I went down and fell, I think, like on my on my elbow like that and had a big deep gash. A gash that would require stitches. That's Matteo picking himself up off the ground and it wouldn't be his last time. This was all from my crash, yeah, in the tour on stage 16. Oh dear me. That is Matteo Jorgensen overcooking the entrance to that corner and going down in the pursuit of the lone leader. I was chasing a stage win and yeah, the guy had a minute on me on a descent and it was a downhill. Watch this again. I was trying to take some, some big risk because to pull back a minute on a descent, you kind of have to go, yeah, you have to go a lot faster through through corners. And yeah, I just pushed it too much and, and crashed. That's right. At 23 years old, in his first Tour de France, Matteo actually had a stage win in his sights. Yeah, you just spend so much time preparing and, and sacrificing all the rest of your life that when you do get there and you have, you know, you feel like you have the ability to win, it's like you want to do it and, and it's super, yeah, it's super motivating, so. It wasn't as unfortunate because I hit the ground. It was more just like, okay, well, it's done now. I, I lost. And when you have that much adrenaline and, and you're, yeah, you're trying to win a, a stage of the Tour de France, you, I didn't even feel, feel the crash at all uh, until after the stage and when I was getting cleaned up by the doctor. Even with that crash, Matteo finished fourth for the second time. Yeah, yeah. That close. It just, yeah. Yeah, fourth is like the worst, <laughs> worst place in cycling, I mean. It just doesn't, it's not good for anything, you know? It's like not a podium, you're up there, but you didn't, you didn't do really do anything. So, yeah, it, it was pretty disappointing. All I can take from it is that, you know, I showed myself well. Okay, so yeah, overall then, your first time out and you do as well as you did, that's got to feel pretty good and feel like there are better chances for you. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, it's super motivating. I mean, I actually feel super motivated to go back out on my bike and work hard and try to have a good second half of the year and, and try to win a race. Okay, so what does that do for like the team until they look at you and say, we got somebody here who's not just gonna be a support rider, he's gonna yeah. contend. 
For sure, yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. Uh, yeah, as a young rider, you kind of have to prove yourself uh, in these big teams because you're, you're riding with guys, like some of my teammates have been professional for 20 years. So they've been professional as long as I've been alive. So it's, despite being disappointed in the moment and not win a stage, I'm, I'm looking back now and it's like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm young and, and it was my first tour and I think I performed well and, and showed that, you know, I have the potential to do it in the future. So there's not much more you can ask for and I'm pretty lucky. Okay, so we all know fourth place in a stage in the Tour de France is not like nothing. But Mateo joined Team Movistar three years ago, which is a team based in Spain. So he had to pick up Spanish pretty quickly. When I asked him if he has to explain to people how someone from Idaho is racing in Europe on a regular basis or even just where Idaho is, he said, actually, there are quite a few writers and directors on his team that are Basque. So, yeah, they've heard of Boise, Idaho. Mateo will only be home for a few more days, returning to his home away from home, that's in Nice, France, on August 14th because there's a race in Hamburg coming up. But get this, Mateo was hoping to go from the Tour de France to riding in the Bogus Basin hill climb on August 13th, but alas, today his team said, no, you can't do that.